Hello and welcome to the daily devotion from Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Lincoln, Nebraska. I'm Vicar Kirstein. Our text for today is the epistle reading from the festival of St. Peter and Paul. Galatians chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. Then after 14 years, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas, taking Titus along with me. I went up because of a revelation and set before them, though privately before those who seemed influential, the gospel that I proclaimed among the Gentiles in order to make sure that I was not running or had not run in vain. But even Titus, who was with me, was not forced to be circumcised, though he was a Greek. Yet because of false brothers secretly brought in, who slipped in to spy out our freedom that we have in Christ Jesus, so that they might bring us into slavery, to them we did not yield in submission even for a moment, so that the truth of the gospel might be preserved for you. And from those who seemed in to be influential, what they were makes no difference to me, God shows no partiality, those, I say, who seemed influential added nothing to me. On the contrary, when they saw that I had been entrusted with the gospel to the uncircumcised, just as Peter had been entrusted with the gospel to the circumcised, for he who worked through Peter for his apostolic ministry to the circumcised worked also through me for mine to the Gentiles, and when James and Cephas and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given to me, they gave the right hand of fellowship to Barnabas and me, that we should go to the Gentiles, and they to the circumcised. Only they asked us to remember the poor, the very thing I was eager to do. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Throughout the book of Galatians, St. Paul is dealing with this issue of circumcision. Why is circumcision such a big deal to the Jewish Christians of the first century? Circumcision was first given to Abraham. And when circumcision was given by God to his covenant people, it served to remind them of the promise that he had given to them in the Garden of Eden. When God found Adam and Eve, who had just fallen into sin, hiding in the bushes with the devil, he told them that through the seed of the woman, Christ would be born, the Messiah, who would crush the serpent's head, and he himself would have his heel bruised. So this, through this reproductive act then, the Messiah would be born. And so circumcision and the promise of this seed, the Messiah, the Christ, Jesus Christ our Lord, was given to Abraham and to Isaac and to Jacob and to Judah and to David. So circumcision points back to that first promise. It points to Jesus himself. But for the Jews of the first century church, they had become a little confused. Circumcision itself became the thing that saves you, instead of pointing to the one who saves by his death and resurrection. They got caught up in their identity as children of Abraham, children of Israel, and confused the role of the law of Moses and circumcision as it relates to Christ and what he has done. Jesus fulfills the whole law of Moses, including circumcision. He earns a perfect righteousness that he gives to his church by faith. We become children of God, not through circumcision or by following the law of Moses. We become children of God through holy baptism, through faith in Christ, through the preaching of God's word. 
not strict obedience to the law of Moses, not to circumcision. These things have no meaning for us now. Christ has fulfilled them all for us. Circumcision is part of the old covenant, which has passed away. Circumcision means nothing to the Christian now. It cannot save. It does not have the power to save. Only Christ does. And Christ has saved you by his death and resurrection. We are saved by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen.